Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. Some big changes are coming to parts of Moorhead's downtown area. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Mike has the night off. The city of Moorhead received $900,000 from the state to clean up contaminated land on First Avenue North that's slated to cost $1.8 million. That land has now been sold to a developer who plans to build apartments on the site. Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker tells us the impact that's expected from this new development. Anytime you have downtown revitalization efforts, it always helps to have a ring of residential around the heart of your city. Moorhead Economic Development Director Cindy Grappio says planned development on First Avenue North will be a good thing for the city. This really helps achieve that as well as um, infill development. Anytime you can repurpose an old site, especially a contaminated site, with a new broad project, it brings new life to the middle of the city. Grappio says the area, contaminated by its former owners before the city of Moorhead bought it, took some time to sell. City infill projects typically have a longer time timeline um, and anytime you're dealing with a contaminated site you need the right developer you need the right contamination um, expert you need the right project to make this feasible the site is set to be home to two 42 unit apartment buildings and will potentially bring in a third building that could be home to businesses there's going to be uh, more people living next to us so i think that'll that'll only be good Junkyard Brewing Company co-owner Daniel Junkie says this project looks like it could bring in more customers for the businesses in the area. If all the breweries or bars are in the same location, then that's where people go and then they'll just walk around to the different places. The project falls under tax increment financing, known as TIF, which is a good thing for taxpayers. TIF is an incentive program where a portion of new building valuation property tax is routed back to the developer for a specified period of time. It does not cost taxpayers any money. In Moorhead, Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. Graffio says tax increment financing will help cover the remaining $900,000 to clean up that contaminated site. The project is expected to be completed in three phases, with the first one ending in the fall of 2017 and the last phase in the fall of 2022. Another hot one out there today, but at least we saw sunshine and lots of it. Let's head over to meteorologist Hutch Johnson for a look at those temps. Hutch? Andrea, if you're out and about tonight, the main threat weather-wise is going to be the heat. Look at that, 90 in both Grand Forks and Fargo at this hour, mid-80s in Lakes Country and in the Devil's Lake Basin. Now, at least it's a dry heat in Fargo with dew points around 59 degrees, but quite a bit more moisture in the atmosphere in Devil's Lake where we have sticky air and a dew point of 71 degrees. A few thunder showers forming in northwestern South Dakota. A few clouds we're watching tonight because we could see an isolated thunder shower threat. The best chance will be along the area I've circled there from south central North Dakota through the Devil's Lake Basin and along Highway 2 through Grand Forks. Otherwise, 80s for almost the entirety of the evening with a south wind. A marginal risk of storms right there. We'll keep our eyes on the skies. I'll tell you about some cooler air heading our way, Andrea, in a couple of moments. All right, thank you, Hutch. You There's still no official word on what caused the fire that destroyed the bison turf, an iconic North Fargo watering hole. Fire Chief Steve Dirksen says investigators are working to figure out not only where the fire started, but how. The owner of the turf, Pete Sabo, says he thinks it started near the exhaust fan on the building's roof. He says he noticed an odor earlier in the day and shut down his restaurant as a precaution. Chief Dirksen says it may well be the end of the week before they're able to pinpoint the cause and location. It may still look like a mess, but believe it or not, progress is being made on the 13th Avenue construction project in Fargo. And even better news, the north side lanes are pretty much done, or they are at least done enough that traffic switched to the new road surface between the interstate and 43rd Street today. That will not only allow the crews from Master Construction to finish the last block and a half on the north side, it will also allow them to get after the south side lanes. Work is scheduled to be wrapped up by Halloween, but financial incentives are built into the contract if it's done before then. Fargo police received numerous calls of IRS scams being attempted in the area. Now they have some tips to keep you from becoming a victim. They want you to know the IRS will never call to demand immediate payment, nor will the agency call about taxes owed without first having mailed you a bill. 
They also won't ask for credit or debit card numbers over the phone or threaten to bring in law enforcement to have you arrested for not paying. If you get a phone call from someone claiming to be from the IRS asking for money, don't give out any information and hang up right away. If you'd like to report a scam, you can go to this story at valleynewslive.com for more information. The Minnesota Department of Natural Resources has confirmed zebra mussels in East Spirit Lake in Otter Tail County. The DNR says a lake user brought in a zebra mussel to the DNR Fergus Falls office in early July. The following day, one live zebra mussel was found in the lake. Minnesota law requires boaters to drain all water by removing drain plugs and keeping them out during transport and to throw away any unwanted bait in the trash. Construction work at the Fargo Water Treatment Plant created quite a scare this morning. Emergency crews responded to a reported explosion and possible chemical cloud. Firefighters determined the call was related to construction workers blowing dust out of a line and say there was no emergency. Officials say there were no chemicals involved and no injuries. Do you know where your kids are right now? What are they doing? If they're 16 or younger and out past 11 p.m., they're breaking the law. Fargo does have a curfew, and in recent weeks, police are finding juveniles right in the middle of a rash of crimes. There were juveniles questioned in a car prowler situation in the Prairie Wood neighborhood, and several arrested in North Fargo for car break-ins. Then, two fake guns were found after police were called to the Dyke West Skate Park over the weekend. A parental noticing at, the, at a younger age to start teaching them about this kind of stuff, right from wrong. And, and we try to engage uh, the area youth as much as we can in the parks, um, but obviously we're not babysitters either. So um, I, it, it's, it's a two-way street, so parents have to be involved. Moorhead has a similar cur curfew. Anyone 16 or younger needs to be home at 11 p.m. Attendance at this year's Red River Valley Fair is off a bit, but a big country music show packed them in. The numbers show a little over 90,000 people went through the turnstiles to take in the festive summertime tradition. That's about 12,000 fewer than last year. Despite that, the fair's general manager, Brian Schultz, says he is pleased overall with the ticket sales and attendance at the grandstand. The Big Night, with Big and Rich headlining, saw 12,000 people packing that show. Schultz says the weather was not overly cooperative for this year's fair, and he says that likely contributed to the overall attendance drop. But he's not dwelling on that. Schultz and company are already working ahead to next year's fair. The dates, July 11th through the 16th. And remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook. You can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. A familiar coffee house in the Northern Valley has opened in Fargo. What you'll find at Bully Brew coming up next. Temperatures in Fargo-Moorhead today above the seasonal averages. We hit 90 degrees. That's the same reading the thermometers reached in Grand Forks today. It does look like cooler air will try to work its way down. I'll have details on that and a chance of thunder in your forecast right after this.